Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with Another Fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content in this video. Go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content in this channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. The Ravens just finished their second quarter of the season. It's already, it's already gone. I know it's flying, right? We pretty much at the halfway point of the season. Crazy. Uh, so we know in the first quarter of the season, that first four games, the Ravens went 2-2. Two two. Disappointing losses to uh, Miami. Disappointing loss to Buffalo. Easy could have been 4-0, but they weren't. They, they lost both of those games, all right? But now you're getting to the quarter two of the season. What did the Ravens do? They went 3-1, and one, all right? So it's a slight improvement. You got wins over the, the Bengals, 19-17. You got a loss to the Giants, 24 to 20, which was extremely disappointing. The Ravens threw that game away, uh, you know, kind of making the same sense they made from before, right? You got a win over the Browns, 23 20, tough division game. And you got a win over the Buccaneers, 27 22. So the Ravens got in this full quarter right here, I mean, sorry, in the second quarter of the season, got two division wins, big, big time wins. Uh, beat the Bucs team that, even though they are struggling, it's still Tom Brady, it's still the Buccaneers. And they they lost to the Giants. The Giants are a a disciplined team. I can still can't really call them a good team, but they are a disciplined team. They don't make that many mistakes. They don't beat themselves. And the Ravens beat themselves. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened on that game. I'm just gonna leave it at that. So, but overall, I want to talk about the offense, the defense, and just the team in general. How we feeling about this team as as a whole overall? Just in the second quarter of the season, just this this games five through eight. What can we take from what happened here and see if something needs to be changed or is it going to be like this for the rest of the season, right? All right, so I'm going to start with the defense, man. The defense has emerged, all right? So we're talking about 17, 20, 22, 24 points, okay, giving up. And uh, some of these are even deceiving. Like the Buccaneers was, was a throwaway touch on the end of the game. And the Giants game, they were so backed up after, you know, what happened with the Tom at the end of the game. That they really shouldn't even been 24 points. But it is what it is. The score line says what it says. Um, but I feel like the defense has emerged. Um, they're playing better overall. Now, they still have to work on the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter sometimes is still too easy. We saw Nick Chubb in that Browns game get whatever he wanted uh, on that one drive with the Browns to say, hey, look, we're just going to run the ball. Um, so they got to get better in the fourth quarter, all right? Uh, the, the Bengals game, even though the Ravens won that game with the last second uh, drive or last two-minute drive, that drive before that, the Bengals ran, got down the field, you know, and uh, and scored. I put the Ravens in a position to where they had to get that last drive. So it's like the defense is playing good, I would say, quarters one through three, and even really half of the fourth quarter. But it's like when we need that one crucial stop, that say, hey, look, this game is over with. If you get this stop, we still haven't been able to get that stop. All right? So that's what I can say for defense to improve on, getting that last crucial stop. Now let's get into the actual players on the defense, okay? Um... This defense to me is now the strength of the team. It has been in this quarter of the season. Um, Justin Houston was sorely missed. As soon as he came back, the pass rush came back to life. Um, now, it's good and bad. I've said it before. Justin Houston is, you know, is not a guy that I have a problem with being the Ravens' best pass rush. Don't have a problem with it at all. But you would have liked to see some of the younger guys emerge. Now, obviously, it's really only a Dafi Owe. We're still waiting on Bowser to come back. We're still waiting to see, even see David Ojabo play. But this D-line is playing good, man, especially the guys on the outside. JPP was an excellent signing. Uh, Justin Houston being back, sorely missed him. So these are encouraging signs for what I'm seeing on the defensive line. Uh, Matt Abike is, like I said, I've said it many times, he's past breakout. He's a legitimate NFL player, and he's here to stay, right? Um, Roger Washington has been playing well over the last couple of weeks, getting his hands up in the passing lane, being disruptive. Uh, Calais Campbell is turning back the clock. He's been really good this season. So the Ravens defense is starting to emerge, right? Starting to get better. Now let's talk about that second level of the defense. Patrick Queen is probably playing the best football of his career, and it started with that Bengals game, all right? Tackles all over the field, um, and obviously that interception when he dropped back into that hook and uh, picked off Joe Burrow. So since then, he's been stacking games. He hasn't had a bad game in the last in this past month. The second quarter of the season has been Patrick Queen playing really, really good football. You gotta be honest. The Browns game, I believe he had eleven tackles, uh, seven solos, couple tackles for loss. He was all over the field, right? Now, is that to say he's playing perfect? No, of course not. But he's playing the best football of his career. And we gotta acknowledge that, all right. Uh, secondly, um, sorry, not secondly, but now, now to the the third level of the defense. Obviously, we, we lost Marcus Williams, so that was that was a big blow. But Geno Stone's been playing pretty well. 
I want to say that Marlon Humphrey's playing like an all-pro again. Can't mention it enough. I need to mention Marlon Humphrey more on this channel because that's how good he is of a player and that's how good he's playing right now. Um, Marcus Peters, we're starting to see an uptick in uh, pass interference and holding penalties on Marcus Peters. That's something we've got to keep an eye out on. Now, obviously, he's coming off an injury. Is it not the same lateral quickness? This guy's just getting by him. You know, it's it's so hard to play corner in this league. It really is. But, you know, we're starting to see a little uptick in penalties on Marcus Peters. So, just something to keep an eye on. Not nothing crazy. Just a one or two a game, but that can add up, especially when they happen at the wrong time in the game. All right. All right. And the most, I think, intriguing thing that's happened in this second quarter of the season is that Pepe Williams has become cornerback number three. He's becoming the slot corner. Well, I won't say the slot corner because Cabalin plays it down there sometimes. So we're just going to say he's become CB3. Jalen Armour Davis has now pretty much been, you know, the new James Prochet from last year. He's healthy scratched pretty much probably the rest of the season unless, you know, more cornerback injuries happen. Um, Brandon Stevens' work has gone down and down and down. And I had to look at Pepe Williams' snap count just to make sure, you know, it's matching up. Excuse me, so 75 75 percent of the snaps for Cincinnati, 25 versus Giants. You know, running team, big personnel. Giants don't have many receivers to put out there on the field anyway. 62 percent versus Cleveland. Cleveland puts a little bit more receivers out there on the field, even though they run the ball a lot. And 53 percent versus Tampa Bay. Right now, let's look at Brandon Stevens' numbers: 24 percent versus Cincy, 29 percent versus the uh, the Giants, 5 percent versus Cleveland. And then he got a big uptick last week, uh, this Thursday game: 53 percent versus the Buccaneers. So. We'll see. It can still be changing, but it seems like Pepe Williams has emerged as the um, the, the, the third cornerback on this team, which is great. I love the way Pepe plays. I said it before. He's a buck 80, but he will bring you to the ground. You know what I mean? No matter who you are. All right? Um, and last but not least, our, our first-round pick, Kyle Hamilton, they're they still bringing him along slowly. But for the most part, yeah, he makes rookie mistakes. But I like what I see when Kyle Hamilton plays. I wish he played, I wish he played more. He's, he's good at guarding tight ends one-on-one. -on -one. There was the big thing about in the Giants game when he got broke off by Wondell Robinson. Wondell Robinson is a 5'8 shifty slot receiver. If the Ravens put Kyle Hamilton on slot receivers, they're setting him up to fail. That's not what he does. He can erase a tight end. He can play in the box. And sometimes he can play deep safety. But putting him on, if you put most safeties on a slot receiver, they're going to get embarrassed. It's just a, that's just a fact. Okay. So that didn't bother me too much. Like we saw in the, uh, the Buccaneers game. And in the game... Uh, they, they tried to run a route on him with a tight end. He got around on him. Boom. Perfect deflection with the left arm. Beautiful play. That's what he could do. Play him a little bit more. Let's see him out there a little bit more. All right. Now, offense. Um, the second quarter season, the offense has really struggled. Despite being 3-1, and one, this offense has not been good. It hasn't been to where we were seeing in that when we kind of started off the season. Even though the Ravens were losing games, you felt like the offense was in a better place. The second quarter of the season, despite being 3-1, like I said, have not seen it. Have not felt that, okay? Um, but let's get a couple positives in there. Ronnie Stanley's return has been immense. He's been sorely missed. Um, I now know I really don't have to worry about that left side of the line. Um, he's he's Ronnie Stanley again. It, and it's, it's crazy. You know, Ray's bottom of lost slowly a couple weeks. But since they've been at, letting him play full time, he's been Ronnie Stanley. It's been beautiful. All right. Um... Let's see. So Gus Edwards has returned. And Gus Edwards unfortunately picked up the injury in that Buccaneers game. But hopefully it's not too serious. But he looked good on his return. We know J.K. Dobbins had to have surgery. And the good thing about J.K. Dobbins' surgery is, all right, uh, they said that it's just to clean up a little bit of, you know, uh, it's like a, like a knee scope pretty much. And basically that will help him get back to his best self quicker than just trying to play through it. So, all right, fine. No, no problems with that, okay? Um but now let's talk about the issues on offense. Lamar has struggled, you know. I can't say it's all the OC. I can't say it's all this or that. Lamar has struggled and at times. We got to be honest about that, okay? But play calling issues, all right? We're still dealing with, to me, bad raw combinations, bad uh, situational play calling, and they're still trying to pass out of heavy personnel. That means and I'm talking about three tight ends, one wide receiver, and sometimes they still have Patrick Carter on the field. So it's almost like having four tight ends on the field which limits the players Lamar Jackson can throw the ball to. Simple as that, all right? Now, running, I'm going to say this. Running out of a passing set is way better than passing out of a run set, okay? Now, if I got three tight ends on the field and I pass the ball, the defense is like, okay, cool. We was ready for the run, but this passing, I ain't too scared about it. Who's going, who's going to challenge you? Who's going to threaten me? But now this three-wide receiver set, 
All right, I got I to gotta account for the pass, so now I can get that runoff, and now the lanes are wider. I'm going to spread out. You feel me? So we saw this in the second half of the Bucks game. The Bucks game is the only part, really, that I can say was been positive for this Ravens offense overall was that second half. Now, they, they, they did some good things in the um, the Bengals game, like getting Duvernay the ball, but then they went away from the last couple of weeks, right? So um, I got down here too much heavy personnel, too much Ricard. Ricard, I believe, in that Buccaneers played only in the Buccaneers game, excuse me, only played 51% of the snaps. That's kind of the range he needs to be at, around 50%. Kyle Juszczyk, I said this before, is one of the best fullbacks in the league. And around and for the for the 49ers, he plays around 50, 53%. Now, that could have changed recently. I'll have to check it out. But when I did the video two weeks ago, that's where he was at. I can't imagine this changed much, right? All right. Um, what have we learned also about this wide receiving core? We've learned that Devin DuVernay is, is, is the best receiver on this team as far as who is playing the best right now. It's Devin DuVernay. He's the most, he's the most dependable in terms of hands, and he's the most explosive. When he gets the ball in his hands, something great happens every single time. The Ravens and Greg Roman have not done enough to – manufacture touches for for Devin DuVernay. We're talking about jet sweeps, we're talking about RPOs, we're talking about uh, screen passes. All of these things happened in the second half of the Bucks game. But before then, this was not happening. All right? The offense struggled, and the Buccaneers game showed something that we all know as Ravens fans. The Ravens have an over-reliance on Mark Andrews, and that can be pointed at Lamar, that can be pointed at Gray Roman as well. All right? When, when Mark Andrews went out, the game was called differently. Lamar went through his reads differently. Now, obviously, you could just say, well, he still threw the ball to a tight end. It just happened to be on sale likely, right? That's true, okay? I'm not going to deny that fact, but it, the ball was still spread around more. You saw Proche getting touches. We saw Demarcus Robinson getting touches. We saw Devin DuVernay get multiple jet sweeps, screens, RPOs. The Ravens are a great run team that don't call, that don't call RPOs. That's craziness. They call it, I believe, two or three versus the Buccaneers. And both went for first downs. Do it more often, right? Um, now, uh, also, I said with the Buccaneers game, so the Ravens need to be in more 11 personnel, more 12 personnel, right? I don't mind Ravens having two tight ends on the field because you can still get two wide receivers out there at the bare minimum. And Isaiah likely is a dynamic player, so he's good to have out there. At this point in the season, Josh Oliver is playing fine. But I'm gonna say this: I don't really care how well Isaiah Lightly blocks. He's a playmaker that makes the defense think at least it might be a pass play. Get him out there on the field. Let Mark Andrews, let Nick Nick Bull is here, right? Let Nick Bull teach him how to just get in the way. Isaiah Lightly don't have to maul people. Just have him get in the way. Linda Baum is mauling people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Zeitler, Ben Powers, the offensive line is doing that. Just, just teach Isaiah Lightly how to get in the way. He needs to be out there on the field more. So more three wide receiver sets and more 12, uh, 12 personnel sets. I can I don't mind Lightly and Andrews on the field. That's a that's two threats. Then you put Bateman and Duvernay on the outside or however you want to line it up. That's great. When you take one of these wide receivers off, now the threat becomes less. Right? All right. Now, um, about the team overall. Um, as a Ravens fan, I still feel uneasy in the fourth quarter. I, I do. I still feel uneasy in the fourth quarter. Uh, the players are doing a better job of closing out the games, but you can tell that they still feel uneasy in the fourth quarter. And not just the players, the coaches. John Harbaugh's body language is is bad on the sidelines at times, right? Uh, I can't remember which game it was. It might have been the Browns game, I want to say. He felt like a collapse was coming. before. Okay, it was the Browns game. I remember, I remember now. Before Justice Hill had that fumble, John Harbaugh is slouched over, hands over his knees, head down. Before, before Justice Hill even fumbled the ball. So that's giving out the wrong impression that you're nervous, that you don't think the team is going to close up, that you don't feel like they're ready to do this, all right? I didn't like that. You're a coach. You're supposed to be lifting. And listen, John Harbaugh, you're supposed to be Mr. Most of, most of, uh, excuse me, Mr. Motivational Guy. So lift your guys up. Don't show them that, right? And nine times out of ten, he's not like that. But I've seen him a couple times, and I, I don't like it. Let's be honest. Now, let's talk about the coordinators. Mike McDonald is starting to figure it out, all right? He's, I'm not going to say he's simplified the defense, but he's got the guys playing better in um, this, those first three quarters, those first three and a half quarters. Now he just needs to figure out how to close games. I still feel like he lets the play, the, the cornerbacks play too far off at times, especially when it's short yardage, especially when it's third down, to give up easy completions on those downs, right? I still feel like that. But he's calling good games. The players are playing well. I can't complain too much about what Mike McDonald has done in this second quarter of the season. He's gotten better. The defense has gotten better. 
Greg Roman, to me, has called, he called a semi-good game versus the Bengals, right? Uh, didn't like too much what he did versus the Giants. Uh, the Browns game, didn't really like much of the Browns game. The second half versus the Buccaneers was amazing. And so what do you do with that? For me, I think the Ravens can still let Greg Roman go. To be quite honest with you. You know, it's, it's not fair. It's a tough business. I've said this before. But the second half of the Bucs game proved that Greg Roman knows how to call a balanced offense, right? And he chooses not to. And Harbaugh had a chance to even kind of defend Greg Roman, right? Harbaugh said that, oh, yeah, no, no, no. This was the plan the whole time. To throw the ball down in the first half and then mix it up in the second half. So now, with me, I'm thinking Greg Roman has made adjustments. Your, your head coach is telling me, no, you didn't make any adjustments. This was the plan overall. That's To me, that wasn't a good look. I know I know Harbaugh didn't mean it like that, but that's, to me, that's how it came out, right? And um, he could be let go. I'm going to be quite honest. Besides the second half of the bus game, when it was very clear and obvious how this team should be playing, um, I think it's been more of a detriment than a, than a help. All right, um, and that's that's mainly what I have for this Ravens team right now in the second quarter of the season. They're still inconsistent in some ways, but they're finding ways to close out games and get victories. They should have been four and zero in this quarter, but hey, they lost to the Giants. It is what it is. They they won. They were three and one, which is an improvement, right? So now through these next four games, can they go four and zero? That's going to be the challenge for the Ravens. That's going to be the uh, the goal, right? Second quarter of the season is over. Now we're getting into we're getting into crunch time, man. Third, fourth quarters of the season is coming up, and the Ravens have to change their ways in certain ways. All right. Now, give me what you've learned about the Ravens through these last four games of the season. What would you like to see improve? Uh, what did you like? Things like that. All right. And we'll talk about it in the comments, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just on the fan TV. I'm out.